All right. All right. So good afternoon. Today is Monday, June 12th in the year 2023 in the year of our Lord. We are uh, going live today on the necessary platforms. And uh, today we're going to talk about the five things you need to know before you buy your first ATM. Um, one of the things that I want to share with, with you today uh, before we get into that is recently, you know, you know, a lot of times I hear people talk about, hey, uh, and we're going to do a video on this too, but Hey, uh, I don't know. I don't use cash. I don't have the need for cash. I don't really know if anybody's, if are people going to use cash? Um, well, let me tell you a little story this weekend. I was at a conference this weekend and um, continuing that every, I must have used cash four or five different times to benefit my customer experience in different situations. I checked in at a hotel. I got the, went to the Bellman, gave him a couple dollars to help me with my bag. Um, I wanted it, wanted to get better service at a restaurant. We did pay with credit card, but I gave the guy some money to get us a little bit better service so we can sit down earlier. So we were in a rush. So I said, Hey, can you help us out? Can you get us in and out of this restaurant in 45 minutes? They said, I don't know if it's possible. Gave him some dollars and all of a sudden it became possible. Then, uh, I took, I, I'm, when I was leaving, I took an Uber to, um, the airport and where I was, it was in Atlanta. There was two airports, some kind of way. They took me to the, uh, international airport. So now I'm in an international airport and I didn't even know. I mean, I never, I don't really pay attention. I always, when we go to Atlanta, I didn't know there was two airports. Now I know there's two airports and now I'm at the other one. Well, the Uber driver said, well, you can take one of those buses over there to get you to the domestic airport. And I thought, well, I'm already here. I don't know how long it's going to take. I got basically 45 minutes to get from this point to through through TSA to my gate and to get on the plane. I don't know how long the TSA line is. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get a bus to even find the right bus to get me to the airport. So I asked the guy, hey, can you can you give me a ride over there? And I gave him twenty dollars, and he took me over to the other to the other terminal. Okay, great. I don't have cash. I have to get out of there, call another Uber, or take a bus. I don't know if I would have made my flight. I don't know if I would have got to TSA. I have no idea what would happen. But because I was I was in a position where I could pay cash to get somewhere, then you know what? It worked out. But luckily, I got to the TSA. I got into the airport. TSA line was um, very short, so I I got in. Got through the line, got to my gate with basically 10 minutes to spare. I gave myself plenty of time, but because of all the mistakes that were made, you know what? I ran short, and but I, I didn't make it. Now, however, if I don't have cash on me, if I didn't use that, I could have, I would have missed my flight. I might, I might not even know where the airport is because I had to take the bus to get to where I was. Um, but I always highly encourage you guys, you're, if you're going to be in the ATM business, always carry some cash. At least it'll help you with better service for whatever you're trying to do in your life. What I've noticed is with 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 a lot of people, they do use credit. And thank God for all the people who do use uh, an ATM to buy whatever they need. But I'm telling you, it is becoming a nice little way to ensure better service, better quality of life is to always have cash on you and utilize it to the best of your ability. So, of course, I'm in an ATM business. So, you know what, we, we, there is, you know, we deal on cash every day, but for those of you thinking about getting an ATM business, start carrying cash on you and utilize it when you can. I guarantee your service and quality of life will be better when you use cash. So, all right. So just my little, uh, lesson for the week that I learned, and I just want to pass it on to you guys. All right. So today what we're doing is we're talking about, uh, Five things you need to know be before you buy your first ATM. All right. So one of the things you need to know before you buy your first ATM is, hey, um, what? There are four different brands of ATM. What what make a model am I? What make am I going to use? What model on ATM I'm going to use? So one of the things we got Triton, which is a, a U.S. brand. Um, 
They we have Paloon, which is a, a Korean brand. We have Tide or uh, Tranix, or sorry, it's Gen Mega and Knowledge Shosung. So those are our four brands of ATM. Each one has an entry level ATM. Each one has a little bit higher of an of an ATM. So usually the higher up ATM is usually about two hundred dollars more. Um, the entry level ATM works just as well. Uh, so if you're looking at the knowledge, and I, I'm not, uh, I'm not not saying that Triton and Plune are good ATMs. I'm just saying that the brands of choice that we use is we n- normally use Gen or Nautilus Shosung is is one we we probably sell nine out of ten ATMs is the Nautilus Shosung, and then the other one we sell is a Gen Mega. Not that there's anything wrong with any of the other brands. We just those are usually the predominant ones that we use is the Nautilus Shosung. Um, they have their two models is the Halo 2 is their entry level model and their Force is their uh, upper level model. And then on the Gen Mega side, it's 2500 is the Gen Mega entry level ATM and their second ATM is the Onyx. So those are the ATMs that we normally use and those are the ATMs that uh, that that we have seen a lot of traction with as far as in the ATM community. All right, so those are what you're going to figure out. Well, what model am I going to use? What make am I going to use? Hey, Phil, is it different? Does it matter if I go with a, a Force or an Onyx? No, um, they're very they're very well put together ATMs. I uh, I'm just a big advocate. When you first start out, you know what? Just just buy an entry level ATM. See if that suits you well. And if it does, great. And if it if you want to get a little some more bells and whistles, then you know what? Buy the next model up. Um, does it make a difference as far as transaction volume? It does not. Uh, and it doesn't. And some people say, well, it looks a little bit better. It does look a little better. But at the end of the day, an ATM, unfortunately, is an ATM. Um, do we buy forces and Onyx? Yes, we do. Why do we do that? Um, just from some of the longtime customers, I want I will put them in there um, just because of the, the it, it stands out just a little bit more. But at the end of the day, I we don't make any more money. We just we just put those in those spots to make it a little bit better. Um, I guess to ensure a, a longer life with the location. Um, we have agreements on every location, so it, that doesn't matter. But if we just want to stand out a little bit more, but that's why we use it from time to time. But at the end of the day, we don't make any more money on those brands, models. All right. Uh, so it's a, uh, okay. So is the person, so now you got a choice. Okay. So you're, you're going to buy an ATM from somebody. Now do you have a choice. Like for us at PDQ Merchant Enterprises, we sell ATMs, we sell parts, we sell, we sell processing. So with us, we're a one-stop shop. So you don't have to go anywhere if you choose to. But if you're going to buy an ATM, you got to look. Hey, if I'm going to buy an ATM from you, do you offer processing? Yes or no. Uh, can, and if I buy an ATM um, from somewhere else, can I process with you? So that's the question you got to know. Whoever, who do I buy from? Is do they offer processing? If I don't buy from them, could you process with? Can we process with you? So you got to know those situations. Sometimes. Um, some of the guys who are processing with, they buy ATMs from some place and they process at a different place. Some of the processors say, well, you know what, if you run into a problem, you're going to have to go back to the manufacturer. So that might be an issue. My advice is always, you know what, if you can stay in one spot, but the guy who you buy the ATM form, just process transactions. If they, if they, if you can do that, that way, if, if there's an error or there's a mistake or there's, there's some problems, you can go right back to, the guy who uh, you're, you're processing with and or, and you bought the ATM from, you say, hey, my ATM is having some issues. They're more likely to help you through that process because they're making money on your processing. So th- they have a they have a um, incentivized and they're incentivized to make sure their ATM is up and running as soon as possible. Where if you say buy the guy, you buy the ATM from the guy, he's like, you know what? What do I care? I already sold you ATM. When we get it, when we get your part, we get your part. We don't, you know, it's like no big deal. Is there a disadvantage to that? Yeah, the guys, if that's, maybe that's bad customer service. And now the next time you buy an ATM, you might want to rethink where you buy it. Sometimes the cheapest guy in the block isn't necessarily the most customer service friendly ATM person. So sometimes you you see guys who say, well, I can, I can, 
I can maybe save 50 bucks over here if I get it over there. Okay, great. What happens when there's service? The guy's not going to be around. He'll get to it when he gets to it because he already sold the ATM. What does he care? He don't care. So I found out that not always the, the cheapest guy in the block is the best guy. And you need somebody who's going to stand behind what they sell. And how often are they going to stand behind it? Every time, once in a great while. And what's their what's their customer service like? Like for us, if you buy an ATM from us and um, the, something goes wrong, we usually say, you know what? Ship, we're going to ship you the parts, send it back to us when you get the box. And then that way, uh, your ATM is up and running as fast as it can be versus if, we, if we're if we not processing your ATM, we'll still try to help you. Um, we don't really – actually, to be honest with you, we probably do the same no matter what. We try to get your ATM up and running. But some guys don't. They don't have to take that approach. They just say, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. And if, it, if it's two, three weeks, four weeks later, then it's two, three, four weeks later. It doesn't matter to them. Uh, again, it matters to us what we do, but I'm not – I don't know about everybody else. Um, so then you got to know, you know, step number three is uh, what's the warranty on the ATMs when you buy an ATM? So you should always ask that. Hey, what's the warranty? I'm, I'm looking at buying an ATM. I don't know which one to get. What is the warranty on the ATM? So it depends on basically who you buy it from. Some, they don't even offer a warranty. Some do offer a warranty. Is it six months? Is it three months? Is it nine months? What is it? And will they stand behind it? So for us, um, the ATM is usually two years from the manufacturer. We usually give two years from the manufacturer date. So it usually takes maybe four months, sometimes five to get it over here from wherever they're shipping it. So let's say that, let's say today is they might, the, they might have like January. Um, you might be getting January, excuse me. I might be getting January, 2023, your ATMs. If you bought a new one right now. You might be getting a 2020, a January 2023 ATM. And so, but from there, we give you two years from that day. So right now, let's say if you, you got an ATM today, you say, well, I should get two years from today. No, nope, it's two years from manufacturer date. And so uh, that, let's say right now, I think you're December, January. So you get 2025. It'd be in what we would, we would do it in warranty up until that point. And then, so that means anything that goes wrong with your ATM, we would replace, uh, we would replace free of charge. Now you're responsible for the labor. That means to take it in, take the piece in or out. Let's say if it's a, a key, a keyboard or a keypad, you're going to have to take the keypad out. Ooh, excuse me. You're going to have, you will have to replace that key keypad. Um, but we'll we'll give you the keypad, but you'll have to do labor on taking it out, sending it to us, and then shipping it shipping it to us, and then we'll ship it back, and then re, you're gonna replace it. So you'll be responsible for all the labor, but the part will be uh, we'll give you a new part. So that's something you got to think about. What's the warranty process like? Who's gonna help me? What what are they gonna do? I don't. Do I know how to replace it? Yes or no? And if I don't, what are they gonna do? And who's gonna do it? So those are the, some of the questions you got to. You got to ask those questions um, when you're looking to get it, buy an ATM or get 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 an ATM from somebody. Let's see. Um, all right. So, uh, what what is the? I wrote this down, so I right, hold on. Um, okay, and then what? Uh, Let's see. What what are the what are the uh, service for your ATM provider? Okay. Oh, what what other uh, what other services do your ATM provider offer? In case, um, so do they do they offer parts? So let's say now you get your ATM, you're buying your ATMs for one guy or one company, and now the the, the ATM it goes out of, it's out of warranty. So but do they sell parts? Do they sell? Um, do they offer repairs? So you you have a keypad. It's three years old. Do they offer service on that keypad? Will they will they exchange it? Will do they have a keypad program? Do they have a, a, a an exchange program? How long is it going to take to get repaired? So you got to you got to ask those questions. Like for us, we sell the ATMs. We also service the ATMs. We provide processing. But if you have a key, uh, if you had a keypad and the keypad's four years old, you could send it into us. We'll ship you back a refurbished one, and it's it's ready to go. It plugs right into your ATM. So 
you don't have to buy, you don't necessarily have to buy uh, a new one and you don't have to have, you don't have to, you would have maybe a replacement one, maybe at, at your office, you put the replacement one, send us back the, the one that's broke. We'll ship you back one that works and go on yourself or you can go back in the ATM. I'm not a big proponent, to be honest with you guys, of you get too much. Sometimes with keypads, they should always be plugged in. So from time to time, you should either uh, plug them in. If they're sipping on the sh shelf, you should put that into an ATM because the batteries start to dissipate if they're not plugged in. So you got to know, hey, this is what uh, this is what we're doing. And you got to make sure that the ATM, the, the keypad is is not sit on yourself for six months, eight months, a year because the battery does dissipate and it might not work. All right. Dispensers is a different story. If you had a spare dispenser, oh God, Ooh. I was traveling this weekend and I'm not caught up in my sleep. So, but, um, <coughs> so if you have, if you have an ATM or I'm sorry, if you had a dispenser, they can sit on your shelf. It's not a big deal. What you would do is you take your spare dispenser, put it into your ATM, ship us the one, and we'll we'll repair your dispenser. So, well, we do that. We repair parts. We have service. We um, we we take care of everything that we sell. That way, you guys are you know it's more of a one stop shop. So we can help you out uh, and keep your business growing and going. So, um, and so my fifth thing that I want to talk about is. Uh, if you decide, hey, I want, I saw some new, I saw some used ATMs. I don't know what to do. Should I buy? Should I not buy? Again, what we always do is I always say the same thing. You have an, you have a, uh, a used ATM. Don't buy a used ATM until you've been in the business for a while. I always like to say, you know, two to three years. Ooh, sorry, two to three years um, in the business. So uh, that is pretty much the sweet spot of when to buy if you're going to buy used. Because you got to know the business inside and out before you buy used. You don't know what headaches, or is it gonna, is it you not operating the business, or is it the business, is it the ATM? So you got to know the difference. And if you buy a, a used ATM, you might not know, hey, this is a problem or this is not a problem. You have to know that, and the only way to know that is be in the business for a while, or have somebody. Oh, geez, I'm really tired. Today. Um, or have somebody, uh, who who knows the business like like we do. So if you guys are looking at, let's say you got a couple ATMs and you're like, Phil, I don't really know. Uh, I'm looking at this ATM. I don't know if this is the right call. It looks pretty inexpensive. I think it's a good buy, uh, but I don't know. You know what? You just take a picture, shoot it to us, post it in YouTube, post it in the Facebook group. And then if, and then we'll take a look at it and say, you know what, this is a good deal or this is not a good deal. Um, especially right now you buy used. You, there are some ATMs that are going to be obsolete. They're going to be boat anchors. It's funny that I see from time to time, I tell people to do that, and they do that. They say, hey, Bill, I saw this ATM, and uh, they, they only want $500 for it. It's a good price. And I look at it, and it's a um, it's a Triton and 9600. I'm like, no, nope, that's going to be a boat anchor in basically a year. You can't upgrade it. You can't do anything with it. So, oh, man. Just tired. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I'm just. I don't know. I guess I hit. I hit the wall tonight. So, um, but you got to know is can it be upgraded or not? So you're gonna you can always take a picture of it, post it in a group. We can help you out to tell you, hey, this is this can be upgraded or this can't be. Or you're gonna if or even if it can be upgraded, you're gonna need, well, how much is it gonna cost me an upgrade? What do I need? What kind of things do I need? Is this gonna be? sufficient is this going to be worthwhile because hey i might be saving two thousand dollars but is that going to be is it going to be um something that i can do and not every atm that's for sale the reason sometimes they are for sale is it's somebody else's problems they just want to get rid of them okay and they say little on let me get something to get out of there um it's not always that the, that the person says oh i was in the atm business or i bought a convenience store and it was here and i don't know what to do with that it doesn't necessarily have to be that Whew. So, um, so you got to just know what you're doing. So anyways, um, we didn't really have a lot of questions today. So I just, I just want to say, Hey, thank you for, for jumping on the live with us. Um, let me see if we got any questions. We got any questions. Let me see. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Oh, I don't see any questions, uh, tonight. So that's good. I must be doing something right. Um, let me see. Anything on YouTube? Let me see this. No. 
No, no. All right. So we didn't have any questions tonight. So, um, but I want to say, hey, thank you guys very much for jumping on tonight. Uh, we're going to be back in two weeks. Um, let me see. I'm just going to throw it out for the people who are watching. Is there any questions? You guys got any questions about anything whatsoever? Um, I got some thumbs up. That's good. But is there any questions? And if there is, um, then we can ask them. Um, I don't see any questions. Um, so, but uh, questions about anything in the ATM business? I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds. It doesn't have to be about the topic, but as long as I'm here, I don't mind asking questions. Actually, I like I like a lot of questions because it's a lot of fun. Um, makes me think. And it also gives us new ideas for we do videos. It's like, oh, the, these people are struggling with this issue, and it's a lot of fun. So, all right, no questions tonight. I must be doing something right. Um, so we're going to see you guys in two weeks again on Monday. Uh, we'll be here at 6 o'clock, and um, we can help you guys out, whatever you want. Don't forget, we do have an A to Z course that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in the ATM business. It comes along with um, uh, all the. It comes along with um, a vault cash agreement, a, 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 mutual, a, a vault cash agreement, a uh, location agreement, service contract, and mobile ATM agreements. Along it comes with uh, mentorship by myself, 23 years experience, and you guys can bounce any questions off of you. It can help you through any kind of challenges that you're having. So, oh, Josh, sorry, thoughts. Say it again. What's your thought? You got to be. No. Okay. So uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks. And as the, as my, uh, you guys know that I took, uh, I took some classes to be a better speaker, if you can believe it or not. And, uh, and, uh, oh, what's this? Mobile versus static. Okay. So I, is that, is that, is that mobile ATMs or is that, uh, or is that, are you talking about cellular service versus, um, wait, say, say it again. Are you talking about mobile, mobile ATMs versus permanent placements? I'll ask that question. One question. So Josh Torres thoughts. All right, so I'm going to assume that you were talking about mobile ATMs versus, let's say, mobile ATMs versus permanent placement. So my thoughts are this, is that, um, well, we do both. I, I think that I treat, here's what I do. I treat mobile ATMs is, and I, I was telling this to somebody else, that's my vacation money. So what I do is we, for the family, we pick a couple spots that we're looking at. And then I'm hustling real hard during mobile season because that's my vacation money. That's my side money. It's my it's my side hustle. Um, we make a, we make a lot of money during mobile season, and it, it and it lets us pick a nice vacation for a family. That's what I do, and I have a purpose. Anything you do, you have a purpose on it. So what, why are you going to do the mobile ATMs, or why are you going to do the permanent placement ATMs? We have permanent placement ATMs. Um, what we do is every season. I usually buy seven ATMs for mobile season, and then we we a brand new. I put those out in the mobile season, and then at the end, then I take those mobile ATMs. We put them on the route. We take the other ATMs off the route that are older, and I usually sell. Um, I usually sell the used ATMs to guys that are that that want to buy them. They're always looking for use, and we sell the used ATMs to those people. So that's what I do every season. But um, I'm a big proponent of the permanent placement ATMs, but we have a, we have a nice lucrative ATM mobile business been doing mobiles for about, eh, maybe about 16 years now. So, um, if you're just going to run mobiles, uh, part-time or, uh, I mean, it depends on what part of the country, unfortunately here in where, where I'm located in Illinois, we don't have mobile season is only, uh, May, June, July, August, September, and October. That's it. We don't really we don't have an opportunity for um, mobiles year round. So for us, all it is is I only have basically five months to do mobile. So it wasn't an option to do it full time. If you're in a particular spot, uh, and I was talking to somebody from Georgia um, this weekend. They said, you know what they 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 can do mobiles almost all year round. 
then do the mobiles if you can. Um, but then you, it's going to be pretty much every weekend when you're doing them. So do you, is, is that something you want to give up every weekend? I don't know. Or maybe you're working your nine to five and then that's, that's the only time you have. So um, I like to do both to be honest with you, but if you can, if you can make just mobiles work, then just make it work. That way you're not, you don't have to worry about it during the week and you, you come in, you do your four hours or your day, or maybe it's a four day event. You just do your weekend and then you're making that fast cash and you're on to the next weekend. So um, it's whatever. Uh, I don't have a particular, I don't have a particular one that I like doing more. I just, I like mobiles. They complement our ATM business. So that's my thought. I hope I answer your question. Mr. Torres, um, I know it's a long-winded answer, but I hope it helped. All right. Well, so that's it tonight. Uh, all right. Thanks. All right. So as my coach said, that's it. That's all. Says the clock on the wall. Hey, I'll see you guys uh, next, or not next week, but the following week. Every two weeks, we have the live at 6 o'clock Central Time. So thank you guys very much. I'll see you in two weeks.